Hi, I'm Dr. Simon Fry, the consultant in clinical neurophysiology. In this video, I'm going to explain how nerve agents work with specific regard to the recent Scripple poisoning. For those of you who don't already follow my channel, I'm not a toxicologist, pharmacologist, intensive care physician, or warfare expert, but I do know at least some neurophysiology, and this is a very important and relevant topic for us. Nerve agents come from a chemical family called organophosphates. These were initially developed as pesticides in the 30s, but given their potential for toxicity, these were unfortunately developed into agents of chemical warfare. As the first group of these were developed in Germany, they were given the term G-series and include sarin, cyclosarin, tabin, etc. The use of these included the Tokyo Metro sarin attack and of course most recently in Syria with devastating effects. Because they were inherently unstable, successes were sought, and the even more lethal V-series was born in the 50s with VM, VX, and VR. Kim Jong-un's half-brother was infamously assassinated with an oil-based form of VX. Russia in the 80s and 90s then developed an even more deadly series, which are classed as Novichok, but which little is known about. Fortunately, we do at least know that their common physiological target is an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase. One of the body's most important neurotransmitters is acetylcholine. It's found both in the central nervous system and in the peripheral nervous system too, and transmits signals at specific receptors called either nicotinic or muscarinic receptors. Once this transmitter has been released, the body recycles it using an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase. Organophosphates bind to this enzyme and block it from recycling the acetylcholine. As a result, the levels of released acetylcholine rise and lead to increased and persistent signaling. This leads to widespread and fairly characteristic signs. Muscarinic overactivation leads to copious tearing, pinpoint pupils, hypersalivation and sweating. The airway muscles constrict, making it harder to breathe and fill up with fluid. The heart slows down and the gut becomes hypermobile, leading to stomach cramps, vomiting and diarrhea. Nicotinic overactivation occurs at higher doses and leads to overstimulation of the neuromuscular junctions, leading to twitches and fasciculations, followed by neuromuscular transmission failure and paralysis. Effects on blood pressure are quite complex and central effects lead to respiratory depression and to seizures. Whilst the use of biochemical warfare is very fortunately not widespread, we do know a lot about the physiology of these poisons and how to treat them from simpler organophosphate poisoning, which is a common method of attempted suicide in rural areas, particularly in India and Sri Lanka. Some of the neurophysiological signs on testing include after depolarizations, which indicate hyperexcitability. This means if we stimulate a nerve to twitch, there will be an after twitch as the acetylcholine lingers in the neuromuscular junction. There are also specific decrement and decrement increment response patterns on tetanic repetitive stimulation as well as single fiber jitter abnormalities too. Treatment focuses on two aims, supportive measures namely resuscitation of the airway, breathing, circulation and seizure control together with decontamination and specific acetylcholine targeted treatment using agents such as atropine, which is used to counteract the acetylcholine at the muscarinic receptors, and the oxymes such as pralidoxime and obidoxime, which are used to unblock the nerve agent from its binding site on the enzyme. There are two important problems with the oxymes. Firstly, their ability to unblock the enzyme degrades with time, and so they have to be used very early to be effective due to a process called aging. Secondly, they don't penetrate to the brain well, and so their primary effects are mainly limited to the peripheries. We don't know much about the Navy chocks, as they are essentially state secrets. We do know that some of their characteristics include being harder to treat and counteract. If they have the ability to reach the brain tissues better than their predecessors, our current oxygen treatment will not be that effective. On a purely speculative basis, the chap who helped develop them and then defected concentrated in a recent interview with the Daily Mail on their central effects. I quote, It's for paralyzing people, it causes you convulsions, and you can't breathe, and after that you die if you get enough of a dose of it. Fortunately, recent research on improving brain delivery of oxymes using a nasal route of administrating obidoxime has shown some moderate success, so hopefully we should have some effective central reversing agents, if not already. I hope this has been helpful and informative. We need to make sure that these awful agents of biochemical terrorism are destroyed and never used anywhere, period. Peace.